Adet, Elena Richards de Ezra, Fairbanks, Alaska, Disto, Deloitte, Piston, Singon, Carolyn Richards, Fairbanks, Alaska, Disto, Githtringit Chog, Piston, Sitto, Kenneth Richards, Fairbanks, Alaska, Disto, Deloitte, Piston, Sidith Nikai, Githtringit Chog, Deloitte, Gith. What I said is, hi, my name is Elena Richards. I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, but from Holy Cross. My mom is Carolyn Richards, lives in Fairbanks, but from Anvik. And my dad is Kenneth Richards, lives in Fairbanks, but from Holy Cross. My grandparents are from Anvik and Holy Cross. My Auntie Marilyn taught me how to introduce myself in Dehignog, it's an Athabascan language. That means around here language. This includes the surrounding villages such as Anvik, Shagluk, and Grayling. She fluently writes and speaks the language. She also taught the kids at our village school Athabascan words and phrases. She also reads stories in Athabascan. There were 500 Alaska native languages before the settlers came to Alaska. Now there are only 80 languages. More than half of them have under 100 speakers left. This is an emergency for the Alaska people. But the Gwich'in tribe are currently working on saving their language, working with softwares that transcripts their words into English. They can use this to build things such as dictionaries that would use to help others to learn and preserve their language. Today, I will be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make traditional Alaska native food. The Yupik people called it a guduk. In Athabascan, we call it vanguk. Each culture prepares the dish differently and with different ingredients. The ingredients I will be using today is Alaskan fish, Crisco, sugar, and wild Alaskan berries. First, you boil the fish for about 30 minutes. After the fish has cooled down, you take all the scales and take out all the bones. Once that is all done, you take the fish and squeeze the excess water out of it. This is a process, and you would think this would build up some kind of grip strength. My auntie told me the way they would do it is with a pillowcase. Two people would grab the ends of the case, squeeze the water out that way. Once that is finished, the next step is flaking the fish and looking for any more bones you missed. together for up to an hour until the consistency is nice and fluffy. I think this is the hardest part of making this recipe. You then fold in the frozen cranberries and blueberries and you fold them in. Once that is finished, all your hard work paid off. was with moose fat instead of Crisco. Other cultures use seal or whale fat. My grandma made this for my grandpa when he would go out and check on his trap lines in the winter. It kept him energized and going for the day. That's what it was originally made for, for hunters that would go out for days. It kept them fueled with moose, moose fat, fish, and berries. Now it's served for special occasions like birthday parties or potlatches. I remember watching my auntie make it for my birthday every year. This dish is part of our culture and brings family and communities together. Next, me and my friend and fellow classmate will be performing an Alaska Native dance. Hi, my name is Elena Richards and this is my friend Taylor Tomaszewski. Today we will be performing the Indian ice cream dance. Within this dance, we are going to be using a couple hand gestures. The first one is mixing the ice cream 
and then the second one is picking the bones out of the fish and you guys will see that in the video hope you enjoy <laughs> My friend Blanche Dementa free taught this Yupik dance to me, which she learned from her dad and grandparents. Growing up in Holy Cross, we learned a lot of Yupik style dances. The reason my mom told me is that we adopted some of their culture because we are close to the Yupik region. I want to continue to learn about my Athabascan culture and language so I can then pass it down to my children so they can learn. Thank you for watching this video. Don't